I am unashamed. What about you? Well, I went by Lake, Lake Province this other day when we was filming, and it is covered up with coots. Oh, is that right? <laughs> and they only fly at night. They're the highest flying duck there is. What's that, sign? A coot. They fly 20,000 feet. Yeah, somebody heard that. At night. Only at night. Only at night. That's why. I, I'm serious. That's the wildest thing because you'll, you'll be hunting the day before when you leave. They ain't, they ain't one of them. And, hey, daylight, hey, they're everywhere. I've never seen them fly more than two foot off the water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Patting their feet yeah. on, on the water. They arrive. They yeah. come out of the stratosphere. They're way up there. Oh, yeah. So they're no they one's fly. ever seen them. They, they, they and so they pilots. Them. Pilots have seen them at twenty thousand feet. <laughs> yeah, they tracked them. Yeah, I'm serious. Pilots have seen them at twenty thousand feet. So welcome to Unashamed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it started off, boys. Hey, twenty thousand. You can feet. always tell when Uncle Si is in the house. There's always a little known fact, Philip, that we find out. Philip McMillan uh, is here with us as well. It's good to have you guys back. Thank you. That Si says that coots only fly at night, and they fly at twenty thousand feet. Yeah, they do. Check it out. Google it. <laughs> Everybody else, check JD. So every time I say something, he Googles it. He's a little fact That's why you'll be duck hunting and you'll duck hunt for a month or two or three weeks and you'll never see a coot. You'll drive out one morning to go with your duck blind and they're everywhere, hundreds all over the water. You're yeah. like, how in the world? Where'd they come from? Come in last night. They all just show up because they fly at <laughs> see, night at about. Well, see, if I wasn't around feet. you fellas, I would have lost the the game show because if they'd have said, "Can coots fly?" I'd have said no because I've only seen them Pilot. look like they're yeah. running on yeah. the top Pilot. of the water. They walking on water. <laughs> Maybe right? it just Jesus, wore them out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just come skipping along the top. That's all I've ever seen them I've do. I've seen them go underwater. Al. <laughs> yeah, they do a lot of underwater. So the the line of the morning side, I took the. Uh, some Jesus chicken, uh, otherwise known as Chick Fil A, <laughs> over to mom and dad's because that's how we get our day started for the Unashamed Podcast. And uh, I took it over there, and so and uh, we're talking. Mom's working on her twenty five thousand words for today, and uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently she gets tired of spending them on dad, so she likes to spend them on me. And uh, so we're leaving, and she said, "Now, Phil, just know this: I won't be here when you get back." But I don't know where I'm going, but someone does. <laughs> that, that, it's, that it's was that clear. Huh? That hey, was their parting hey, shot. Hey, that's the parting shot. Hey, I won't be here when you get back. I don't know where but, I'm going. I don't know why. I ain't got a but clue where I'm going. Knows. But somebody does. Okay. Well, I'm glad of that. She said the she said the other day she woke up and and it was in the morning, but she wasn't sure, and so she looked over at Dad, and Dad was awake, and she said. Did we just take a nap, or, or did we sleep all night? <laughs> or did we? Have we been asleep all night? <laughs> I've slept all night on that, but no. Okay. I was like, so I'm my- just giving you young bucks. Get ready for the, when when you finally when they get about seventy five, eighty. I mean, get ready because you like. Uh, she what? literally wakes up in a new world every oh, day. She, she, we was filming, you know, eating a chicken off or scrolling dumpling, and she called you. Said you gonna take it out? It was like five thirty. Phil <laughs> said, "Yeah, probably will." <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get in that pre supper nap, right, yeah, son? Yeah, get, get in my hour for for watch a little TV for a night. Yeah, that's what you got uh, to look forward to, don't you, Dad? Some of them within the little group y'all gathered up they had never eaten and, and to them just a word a couple of words squirrel down dumpling yeah no they're like missy, squirrel. missy i asked her about it. she said i've been queasy all day long <laughs> God. I love squirrels. Yeah, yeah. I, goes, wait to watch I love had, anything in dumplings. Yeah, because Kay had to take a pocket knife That's and get those Squirrel and dumplings are one of the finest meals oh, there is. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, she does a pork roast in dumplings, too, that's just out of this world. But, you know, anything in dumplings is pretty good. Yeah. Phil, you don't get a body like this without that's liking right. some dumplings. I, and I will eat some squirrel and dumplings. <laughs> I was with Cy eating it, and Jep had to pick off one of the little hairs you know he was like well this one's got a little hair on he just took it off and kept eating it yeah and missy was like oh <laughs> <laughs> she's been crazy all day <laughs> she didn't like it yeah who, who cleans them as a boy? not not for silly for for silly little 
females. <laughs> gatherings, modern gatherings. Eat squirrel. For how many meals you ever eaten? That was squirrel size. Uh, how, how many, many squirrel oh, meals? Good grief. Oh, literally thousands. No. Oh. Literally. So, so I don't it know. When I when meal. I was a kid, I never knew there was a limit on squirrels <laughs> because because yeah. yeah. the limit was for dad. The limit was how many you could tote on your back. So, and how so many can you carry? Dad had made him a little. That this was <laughs> dad was around before they made hunting backpacks like yeah. they have now. He made his own. So he made his own. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we sold them for a while, Dad. Remember yeah. the old game bags you, yeah. we used to make? And uh, Granny sewed the first ones we sold. She sewed them together, and we sold them. Mm. But. uh so dad would come in uh, from squirrel hunting. Of course, I was the assistant, the leg spreader, you know, oh, oh, and yeah. started cutting on them. You got to have somebody to help. got to have it. Yeah. I and mean, then we kept flour and meal, but, but overall, as far as just eating meat, most of the meat was coming out of the woods. Yeah. That was pre-deer, no deer in the country. Yeah. I mean, there were a few deer up. Uh, Noah. Oh, I was ruined on it. In fact, it's funny because Jay has this, all these deer everywhere, and it's just like you go and watch them. And so my grandkids love to go, and they were like, Pap, why don't you ever go? I was like, because I deer hunted my whole life and never saw anything. Yeah. Yeah. I sat on the side of a tree, froze my butt off. Yeah, for no reason. Looking down a lane yeah, that for- nothing <laughs> ever appeared. Every once in a while, a snake would come across or yeah. something. So yeah. I just, it was the most uncomfortable sleep in the history of my life, yeah. <laughs> trying to sleep on the side of that tree. Because nothing else was happening. <laughs> so we never killed any deer. I mean, there was no deer here, I guess, back oh, in Oh, no. There were no deer. There was no deer. Yeah. If you I didn't saw see a deer, a deer track, track in the woods until I got in college at Ruston. And somebody said they're bringing pears, deer pears, a buck and a doe from way up north, one of them northern states. And they brought them down here yeah. and started letting them go. And I literally saw... A population explosion when the well, we got some now. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. As a matter of fact, bring that up. I just got back from South Texas. Yeah, I want to hear about this trip. Yeah, I, I always go to Eddie's. Did y'all get stuff. one? Oh yeah. You know me, BK, and Stone went, and uh, uh, Evil Eye. Less. Less green. <laughs> you know, we went. He shot does. I shot a big twelve point. BK, of course. You know that first evening we're sitting. You know, I'm in a different stand. You know, I see Justin's phone, you know, and I knew what. what you already knew. Oh, I already knew. BK done killed her. She's yeah. been she's been in the stand less than 15 minutes. <laughs> Hughes and walked up, boom, you know, pop dropped him on the ground. She probably didn't even react. She's no, just like. No. She just put the gun on safety and put it over there, you know. <laughs> you know so then I had to, you know, I had to hunt two days to kill mine, you know. But she I loves can't. it though. She's an outdoors uh, woman. I well, mean, she's, she's always doing. been a naturally good shot. She's just, you know, she's got the what you, she's got the calmness that you need. No, to no. Be good well, hey, Stone's training. Oh yeah, Sage right now. Oh yeah, she's shooting BB guns right now. I he know. went, he went deer hunting with her the other day, and you know, she kept her eye on the spotting scope the whole time. She Stone said she was the deer counter, and I said, "Well, how many did you see?" He said, "42." <laughs> That's what she came home and told me. <laughs> now she's a little more rambunctious, so I don't yeah. know how she'll be on actually. You know, when it comes time to start dropping them, now she's will slip up behind you, side and just put you smooth oh, no, out. No, she, no, she'll, no. She'll, she'll. I went over there. They invited for a meal, and I went over there and sitting in a, in a recliner. Sage comes running in, and she gets squared up right in front of me. <laughs> you know, and she says, "Uncle Si." I said, "What?" She said, you want to wrestle? <laughs> I said, Sage, get your butt outside. I don't want to wrestle don't you. Wrestle I've now. done seen you put Carly's boyfriend <laughs> on in the a floor. chokehold and on the floor. He passed out. You know, she loves, she already won gold. Oh, yeah. She's won a lot of gold. Yeah. Which is costing me. Which is costing me a lot of gold. <laughs> I bet it is. Because my grandkids think every time they do something in sports, <laughs> yeah. the past it's supposed gotta, to pay yeah, Ola. Pay. Pay yeah. it's, it's time to go see Grandpa. Yeah. Then and then Corby comes and says, "Well, Pap, I need you to buy me some new basketball <laughs> shoes to invest in my basketball season, so I can make some more money." I said, "You're making it from me. You want me to pay for <laughs> yeah. your investment to make more money for me? You're going said, broke, Al. You talk about a deal. So I need to verify oh. a story because." When we were eating the squirrel and dumplings, Cy si said, "Oh yeah, boy, we had a we had a good hunt." Me and Phil, he was talking about him and Phil hunting squirrels, and I said, "Well, what happened?" He said, "We went. Phil came and picked me up. We went to the woods, and I shot twenty seven times." <laughs> I said, "Good grief! You must have had a pretty good day." 
He was like, all snakes. <laughs> he said, I had to shoot my way out of there and told Phil I was never going back to that I hole. I didn't go back. When you shoot 27 snakes hunting, that means you're looking down. You're never looking. No, no. You're not going to kill any squirrels. I've never you... seen a squirrel. Okay, because look, I, I, I stepped in the woods and, you know, and he said, oh, by the way, he's already 50 yards away from me. He screamed, hey, by the way, I said, what? He said, forever squirrel. There's 10 <laughs> points in a snake. Well, hey, I ain't took two steps in the woods. There's two cotton mouths and a copperhead. I started to go around them. I said, no, it's fixed to get dark here in about an hour. I just boom, 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 killed them three. I, I didn't go but 100 yards in the woods. And I said, I looked up and I said, ooh, it's getting dark. I better ease on that because for when I, where I can see. Yeah. Hey, 27 <laughs> shotgun shells later, I made it to the road. Snake hunt. He shot All his... right, to wrap that up. All right, hang on, hang on. Before, hey. before, we, before we move to Talk our text. The redneck world. I, before we move to our text, I got one question aside, because the blind is out now on on uh, DVD. And so when Lisa and I are traveling, you know, we hear a lot about the movie. Yep. Know, that's kind of the new thing yep. people are talking yep. about. And one of the the comments that I've been hearing all across the fruited plains of the U.S. is is that they say, uh, you know, I see Uncle Si in a different light than I ever saw him before huh. after watching the movie. And so at first I was curious, what what so what does that what do you mean? And they said, well, you know, he's always so funny, and he's still funny in the movie, but I just man, just the way he cared about. Uh, his brother and the way he was concerned and the way he was there for your mom and their, their friendship and relationship. I mean, just, I've never seen that side before. So I was just going to tell you that next time I had you on the podcast and it was really interesting. So I wanted to get your take on that. Well, I'm glad you said that because p the people that have watched the movie, you saw the first 28 years of my brother's life. Okay. Now look, get off of the negative negativity. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you it's need. Been, there's been 50 years since. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, hey, Zach, this is for you. You need to do a trailer to this, okay, to show his life. We've seen the 28 and a half years before Christ. Hey, how about showing the 49 years or just little snippets of the 49 years with Jesus? There you go. The what last. About a, what about a okay. sequel? Yeah, yeah. The last event well, that yeah. we were on. Because I'm tired of the negativity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because all I hear is, okay, well, yeah, he was a rascal. Well, hey, look, that was the old one. The old one is dead and buried. The new creation has been on the road for 49 years and counting. Yep. And counting. Okay. And he's preached the gospel. Okay. You know. To millions, yeah, and and now what point. what what had happened is you know we went to a couple of events after the after the movie came out, and it, it just people just kept talking about oh that Phil boy he was a rascal I tell you what he was right and so Sai said he looked at me he said you know I've had enough he said I've heard enough yeah the the man has repented and for fifty years he's he's been doing the right thing he slammed his hand down and scared me. <laughs> Well, he I said, uh, "He said that we're kicking a dead horse, boys. Now let's move on." <laughs> and, and look, I don't usually get scared around Sai, but I was like, "Okay, Sai, he well, done hey, got fired up." And I told you, I well, said, he just got fired up. And about to this the deal. to that point, uh, that's the point that people made is they've never, you know, Sai's usually just tell a funny story and game for whatever we're going to do. But obviously, there's a there's an emotional depth side to Sai that people don't always get to see. And so they did, they noticed that in the film. So that's really good. I, I'm glad you said that, Sai, because you're right. I mean, everything now is is what we do going forward. Oh, no. And that's the power of the story. So, Dad, there's a lot going on college campuses in America that's not too good <laughs> these days. Uh, a lot of our problems seem to be stemming uh, from higher education. But I can tell you one group uh, that's not that way, and that's our friends at Hillsdale College. Uh, we love these guys we have for years. Um, you know, they, they understand what it is to educate people by using things like history, economics, great works of literature, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution. I mean, things that people should be studying in school, right? Things we need. And what's exciting is, is they're offering uh, more than 40 free online courses uh, for all of these subjects. And they're offering it to you, our audience, which is great. Uh, you can learn about the works of C.S. Lewis. 
uh, stories in the book of Genesis, of course, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution, rise and fall of the Roman Republic, uh, ancient uh, Christian church, a lot of great studies online, and they're all available for free. That's right. I said it. It's free. Uh, they, uh, I personally recommend the C.S. Lewis on Christianity, uh, which is a seven-lecture course, just because C.S. Lewis's works have had such a huge impact uh, on Christianity. So uh, they're self-paced, so you can start whenever and whenever you want. Um, you can enroll now in C.S. Lewis on Christianity to discover his core lessons regarding truth, as I said. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash unashamed to enroll. There's no cost. It's very easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash unashamed to register. Check them out. So we actually owe a lot to people that Phil preached to and his lifestyle changed. We owe a lot to him. Yep. Okay, for having the boldness to stand up, you know, and stay with Jesus and say, hey, look, let me tell you a story. Right. And I think the uh, that's the one thing that I, that I hear a lot about the film is the ripple effect of mom and dad's conversion and how that's then gone out. Like it's a, impacted like millions. Like a stone in a pond, right. Yeah. It really has. And it so, impacted and me. And look, every day. It I impacted mean, that man sitting across from me. Oh, yeah. Well, Philip, I you mentioned know? this last time we were on, but Philip sat next to me, and you were boohooing through the thing, and I was like, and so at some point I leaned over, and I was like, man, this is emotional, and he said, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't he, even be here him was, He was like, I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. Americans now, they're getting a taste, and it's getting worse, of being a wimpy. This is your notes, Al. Being wimpy, weak. And woke. <laughs> That's our next podcast. <laughs> right? That's the okay. tease like for the next yeah. podcast. That's right. Yeah, yeah the and guy that wrote that. A lot that of book. truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. And look, it's it's so much of it is just standing up to do the right thing. So look, we're gonna we're gonna do Bible study today. It's not gonna be our typical uh, Cy and Philip uh, podcast because usually we swerve into the duck call room lane when you guys are on because we. No, I'm actually time. looking forward to this because. Philip gave me where we were going to be at, so I've actually studied for this one. And, Good. And, you know, because I've just, I can't wait to see what we're going to learn. So so we, yeah. so we are, we're going to pick up in Matthew 18, and Sal, you'll love this, So because Jace is off, he's having to, to try to finish up his uh, treasure show, yep. and so he's uh, missing a few podcasts here, and so... Uh, Luke 18. So we're actually going to plow new ground before Jace gets a chance to get his Get his digger out yeah. over this. Yeah. So we're going to actually do some treasure hunting in the text before, before Jace gets a chance. So I love it. Uh, although you know he'll have to get the last word because hey, that's him. He is named after you. Yep. That's uh, him. So we're in Matthew 18. Luke. Luke. <laughs> How many times did I say that? Three. <laughs> Luke 18. Uh, and uh, we're talking about the rich young ruler. So I'm going to read this text and then then we're going to dive into it. Um, now we just to set up context wise, we've been in this section in Luke talking about these, there's been this back and forth between Jesus and the Pharisees for, for pretty much ongoing about three chapters here. And it started in Luke 15, you know, because they noticed he was eating with tax collectors yep. and sinners. And so ever since then, there's been this back and forth and, you know, they have their self-righteousness and no matter what his topic is, he keeps coming back to that. Yep. So I think that's one of the reasons why Luke puts this in, because he's about to, this is the first of three encounters that Jesus is going to have, and then he's going into Jerusalem. So it's about to kick into gear, everything he came here to do. So we're right here at the precipice, and then he, he runs up on this first guy, and I think there's a reason why, which we'll get into. So Luke uh, 18, 18. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Which is a great question, right? Yep. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. So a lot of people say he only 
Pilate's told him one thing, but Exodus told him two. You sell off your stuff, yeah. come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard, those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? And so I don't know if that was his disciples at first or just people standing around. Jesus replied, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Peter said to him, we've left everything, we, we've left all we, that we had to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus said to them, now he's talking to the disciples, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. So he puts it in the context of both. So you know, and then also the reason I kept saying Matthew is because in Matthew 19, you see the same story uh, in a little bit different verbiage. And then in Mark 10, you see the story uh, as well. So one of the things you notice in the other two contexts is this man is is humble. He's not like what Jesus has been facing because in the in the Matthew context, we know he's young. But in the Mark context, we know he comes and kneels before Jesus. Yeah. So he shows his humility right off the bat. So it's not like... You know, because it doesn't end well, obviously, but it's not like he comes in with some big chip on his shoulder. I mean, he he's humbly coming to Christ to ask the question when he comes. So, I mean, I think he's coming in the right vein, but obviously we've got a problem. I don't think he was legalistic, Al, or, or self-righteous. I think that he was secure in his surroundings and material things around him. And, yep. and how many people have you ran across that they're stuck on those things? They don't want to come... Uh, to Jesus because of the the protection, the security, the whatever it is, the idols, the idolatry, really. What is it that's holding them back from following Jesus? And and this is this is probably part of one of those stories. Yep, I agree. What I get out of this is okay. First off, the focus is wrong, or the perspective, because everybody in this story is thinking about themselves. Yeah, I, I, you know, and especially since like at the beginning of this, it, he talks about a judge that has no regard for a for God or man. That's right. This is a man of power. A judge is. He says, "Okay, hey, put him in jail." He goes to jail. Right. Get death penalty. Hey, he he's dead. You know. So I, what got me on on this Luke eighteen is is all the different people that Jesus told. Stories about mm -hmm. the rich. We're on the rich young ruler. This guy's got it all. Yep. No need for money. He feels safe. Yep. Okay. And he even dresses Jesus as good teacher. Right. And Jesus says, "Why do you call me good? No one's God except you know. No one is good except God." Right. At least he did have that right. He did. <laughs> he did. But all of them is the wrong focus and the wrong perspective. And you're right. Even the guy side that that. The prayer, remember the Pharisee is they're having the prayer. And oh, he's yeah. in the One. temple. The guy's outside and he oh. says, Lord, I just want to say I'm glad I'm not like that yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And he's pointing yeah. outside and, and hey, saying, you know. And it's all here. Yeah. It's, you know, like when you like to point your finger. Yeah. Hey, you got to understand something. I'm pointing my finger at you. I got four pointing back at me. That's right. But if you ask somebody, either then or now, and if you ask them, uh, would you like to live forever? Would you like that? Well, most people, the majority of people, you know, there's some of them, nah, they'll run their mouth, but most people are intrigued by the possibility. Well, if you're honest. That they yeah. could live yeah. Yeah. forever. If, if you're honest. Yeah. You should, the answer He's a good, good guy. He's a good, pretty good guy. He said, well, you know. How come I can't live forever? Jesus said, well, I'm the one that can give it to you and don't give it to you. And then you're, 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 you're in the middle weighing it. You're yeah. weighing it. Right. You know, what I have now, what I've, what I've made, what I've done. You say, not going to help you out when it comes right down to it. Right. You know. Well, I think, and, and another thing that's interesting. I mean, eternal life is writing on these pages. Because 
we, we know we're going to die. This says there's a way, there's a way out of it. Right. You, 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 you could live on. You live, live past your little stay there. Well done. You, you, I'm going to give you eternal life. That's what's that's that's what's in this. Right. Well, just that, you know, if he removes all your sins, he has to be that way. To, in other words, to get to get the real you out of it, so you'll serve him. All your sins are removed, and I can be raised from the dead. The possibility of that. This is the only place I ever found that. Yeah. You read any other writings, books, all that stuff. You say it, 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 it won't match that up. That offer this. is not a, that not offer is nowhere else. No. Yeah. That's why it I it, mean I'm putting laying my life on it. I'm saying I believe that there's life beyond this. Yeah. And they're gonna say prove it. And I'll tell them to give them Luke eighteen. Yeah, I'll, I'll just explain to them. And and what have you got to lose when, well, when what's you get in, right down to it? What's interesting is let's uh, let's take another break. Following Jesus, what do you have to lose? You're getting drunk, getting high, and getting laid. Okay, let's get it. Let's get past that. That's all temporary. Yeah, it's all very temporary. But what's interesting is this: this is a guy who had everything yeah. he needed in this life. That's right. But to his credit, as I said, he was curious about the next one. No, no. no. I mean, in other words, we've we've had several parables where people don't think about the next life, right? The guy's building the barns, you know. How did he ask about good? um, uh, So here's what I think. That's an interesting point. So he says, he says, good teacher. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. So I think, I think Jesus, knowing his heart, was setting him up, you know. He was. As Jesus yeah. does. Because yeah. what Jesus is, is basically says, before he gets to the commandments, he he puts himself in the framework of, you call me good teacher, but only God is good. Of course, Jesus is God. Right. Yeah. He nailed it. He, he, really. he, he totally nails it and lays out who he is. So then he's going to test the guy, so you really think I'm God. Okay. So... Have you kept these commandments? And you notice when he lists the commandments, here's something I find interesting. Out of the Ten Commandments, he lists the back half that are all related to relationships with other people. He didn't say anything about love the Lord your God with all your heart. So he didn't say anything about worship no idol. The God stuff he doesn't list. Jesus only gave him look the relationship. At the, look at the hatred of our culture of individuals in the streets. I mean... How could sinful people get up and hate groups? It makes, well, it makes, you, it makes you wonder. Well, but the world the is full of hatred. Mm. I've been here 75, 80 years, and the world is more hatred, more hatred now than there was 30 years ago, 50 years ago. I come up during the 60s, people got to go on out there smoking dope, you know, <laughs> went through all that. Now that's all been the past. But they just get out in the street with all kind of signage for the for some strange strange reasons. You know, they're they're in college and all of a sudden they're out in the street hating their neighbor. And they that they haven't even met. Mm. Most of them have never even met a Jew. No. Or a Palestinian. Or a Palestinian. Right, and yet, they, but that's what got me on. But that shows you what's missing in their life and no, their no. heart, because yeah. you, you tend to you tend to follow causes when you have no cause. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like no. you have to then manufacture well, something. No, no, because no, everybody, you know, everybody wants acceptance. Okay, and 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 it even goes deeper than that. Everybody wants to be loved. Okay, and they're searching. Okay, and and. <laughs> they they miss it. God's already showed His love, right? So in His Son, that's what gets me about the whole book of eighteenth uh, chapter. Jesus had a tough time. I mean, with the Jews, and here's a shocker: Jesus was a Jew. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, his lineage yeah. coming from David. I mean, he said he was. I'm, Just I'm a, that. I'm going to have a hard time hating Jews when Jesus I, was I, I a think When maybe, my Lord and Savior was no, a, no, Jew. If a our Jew. Culture, <laughs> if our culture understood that uh, the ones who rejected Jesus, who coincidentally 
he, he's a Jewish, you're a Jewish guy. Mm -hmm. That was his family upbringing. Well, they hated him, and they'd hate him for no reason. I mean, but they do. So I'm looking at like, Love God and love your neighbor takes on a different meaning when you look out at a world that turns on those two things. Yeah. They, and they love God and love your neighbor. You'll be a lot better off. Well, how's that working for us, uh, Al? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, not good. And we're fortunate to be grafted in as Gentiles. I mean, yeah. we're a bunch of wild olives. That's oh, right. Yeah. I mean, we, we made it. Yeah. Be happy yeah. we made it. Yeah. If we're going to cut the branch, we're cutting ourselves off, too. That's right. A lot of people have asked that. I'm I, not going to badmouth somebody yeah. that his lineage was whatever it was. The whole chapter, he <laughs> if The a, world's full of hate, and yeah, a lot of them right. are wondering why. And I said, well, I'm trying to figure out that. The two myself. My question is, is why the different people? Okay, because he goes from a judge to children to a blind man to a rich man. Yep. Okay, and, and Ecclesiastes says it all. Solomon, who had it all, okay, he said all this, like the temporary stuff. Yeah. All of it is meaningless. Yeah. Without Christ, it is meaningless. Yeah. Okay, you're talking about eternal life here, you know? So what Jesus a, was a Jew, okay, and right now, okay, like you said, you're hating a oh, way meant what well, happened to it, love it, God it with stretch, all your heart, mind, soul, and it, you know. it'll stretch your your inner self when uh, you know you start looking at the next thing. It's Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Even tax collectors could make it with Jesus. There, right. nobody else wanted. By the way, to hell I, with them. Another, with everybody saying another. Jesus said, "Wait just a minute." Another wealthy man who got his by ill-gotten gain. We don't know how this rich young ruler got his money. We assume he was an upright person. Yep. We get to Zacchaeus, who cheated people, who stole from people, who people hated. He was working for the Romans. I mean, he had everything working against him, but he had one thing for him. He had a heart seeking Jesus. Yeah. Uh, you don't climb a so tree while you're bad unless you've got a heart for him. So while, while one is bad-mouthing his neighbor for whatever reason, I'm going to make it, but he's not. You better be real careful when you go down that road. Well, the two men that prayed. I mean, I, I, I can't look at other people's sins and say, yeah, that's bad. Uh, I mean, because I'm thinking until you repent, you don't realize how your sins drag you down and changes what's in here. <laughs> that's right. What were you going to say? Inside the, guy, the guy's heart, she wants the guy outside. Uh, the. He yeah. wouldn't even go in. Right. He wouldn't even look up. That's right. He wouldn't even look up to where God is, and he said, hey, just be merciful for me, God. That's I'm right. a sinner. That's when you're measuring so your show good— me your, Show me your love. Yeah. Please. That's when right. you're measuring your good works up against the things you've done good and the things you've done wrong, that's the wrong scale. That's right. You're never going to get there because yep. one sin— cuts you off. That's right. You keep the whole law. You stumble at one point. You're guilty of breaking all of it. That's why people need to understand the dilemma they're in. That's right. You That's need Jesus you need more than anything Jew. else. Yep. That's right. That's si. exactly why you need the Jew named Jesus. That's right. And I wanted to ask you about this, Phil. It's just, and, and Al, just see what y'all thought. Okay. Let's take another break. So, so Jesus uses this example. It's harder for uh, a camel, a camel to go through an eye of a needle. I mean, that's that's a that's a that's that's an impossibility. You would say that's impossible. Yeah. So is it because people won't give up the like Phil was saying earlier, whatever it is in their life that they can't get away from, the drugs, the sex, the alcohol, whatever it is that's keeping you away. When you say no, I will not turn to Jesus. You're putting yourself in that camel and the in the needle situation. Yeah, you got you. You make a good point it, because. But we've talked about this before on the podcast. This isn't a text about wealth. I mean, wealth is involved in the story. But that's that wasn't the purpose of what he's talking about. Because yeah. we got way too many cases where Jesus is pro business, pro, you know, earn a profit, you know, t parable after parable. So he's not, what is right where the heart is. And so I think the impossibility is that somehow you think that you can thread the needle of doing the right things without ever fully submitting and committing yourself to Christ. Because the rich young ruler's problem was, is he was still hung up on what good is. He thought he was good. 
He was still hung up on exactly. self. Exactly. And he looked at Jesus and said, hung hey, up. hey, good teacher. You and yeah. I are right here together. Yeah. But, but he missed it. He missed the whole point. And Jesus knew that, which is why he says, okay, um, you seem like a good guy. Why don't you just sell off your stuff? Because look, all the people that Jesus had asked to follow him up until this point, they didn't have much. I mean, they did walk away from their fishing Dirt enterprise. Door. We all fish for a living. I mean, that's not that hard to walk away from, right? But, but it, here's what you, you got to ask yourself. What, you know, what's your foundation built on? Like we, me and Philip was talking coming down here. What makes a man? Okay, if you really look at it, get rid of the clothes, get rid of the riches and the whatever. When it gets right down to it, Whatever you see that man put his money into and his time into, that's who he is. Okay, and it goes back to what you were saying. Hey, you know, that's why the Bible says, okay, they're faithless, they're heartless. Where your heart is, you know, if if you're, you know, I, you're going to find out who you are, what you put your faith in. Well, see, I put my faith in a man named Jesus, his story. Who he is, number one, who he is, what he has done in the past, the present, the future, okay? And and it's a promise. Mm -hmm. Of what he will do. Yeah. Well, and that's so, so my theory is, is Jesus says he gives him the commands of how he's related with other people. And the man's done a pretty good job. And he said that. He says, since I was a boy, I've made sure I've honored my mother and father. I don't cover other people's stuff. He never asked him about the God commandments until he says, you want to love God? Just sell off your stuff and start over. Come follow me. Join in with this ragtag group right here. And he looked at them, and he thought about that bank account, and he said, Can't nope. Do it. Can't well, do one it. of the things I asked me when Bill Smith <laughs> shared the gospel with me, one of the things that got me, I said, all of my sins, all of them, every one of them, right clean, start over. I said, man, I tell you what, I got to think about that a little. I said, because I've got a lot. <laughs> yeah, but hey, here's uh, yeah. I was thinking, but, but, but when you, you were thinking removed, too many. Yeah. I was yeah. Thinking, nope, nope, because see, that's the thing. That's, that's the beginning of this, okay, where it's talking about back to the judge. He had no regard for man or God. That's right. Yet, okay, a widow comes to him and says, hey, you need to help me with my adv- adversaries. Okay, and when I was reading this, one person popped in, in my head, Jan Robertson. Mm. Jan Robertson was this woman with Bill Smith. She was not going to get off of, of Bill's shoulders yep. until he preached you the gospel. Yep, that's it. That's what, it, that's what she okay, did. Okay, because, hey, there's truth in what we're reading. This is God's word. Yep. There's truth in this. You can believe in this. You can take it to the bank. He can't lie. God does not lie. He's promised you. Yeah, Jan had to figure it out. You get, you get him. How, she, how did she know that? And she knew it. Oh, no. She knew it as much as she knew who oh. she was. you. That's why she never got off the of Bill Smith. You win him. He'll win, he'll win him. <laughs> well, because I've always said it. Bill Smith was the only person, okay, that God could choose to send to you. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of a Sunday morning. Uh, uh, old Jersey Joe, we converted him. He come out of New Jersey. Now he's cooking. We found out that some people. <laughs> he can't cook. Some people out there over there, these Italians, you better be careful how you operate around them because they can cook. <laughs> but, but he, he said, look, we started our class and he said, if anybody out here, we'll just give it to you up front. If any of you, and some of you probably need to, but don't let me talk you into it. But he said, but if you want to be baptized today, and all your sins washed away, and you'll have God's Spirit in you, you've come to the right place. Anybody out here to put, well, about six or seven girls raised their hands. And I said, I said, well, y'all have come to the right place. Let me go through some scriptures Find out what you're getting out of it, all this. Well, I didn't realize they were come out of one of these houses, you know, where they yeah, like a recovery house. An older yeah. woman was taking care of them. Yep. But they they were afraid. She was their Bill Smith. The yeah, yeah. Way. They were afraid of the water, 
Yeah. They were afraid they were drowned in the water. And I said, let me explain something to you. We do this all the time. This is pretty wild. I said, this is pretty wild. We're going to push you down in the water. And you're going to think, I am going to drown because I'm oh. going under the water. I'm dead. I, you, I said, you're you, dying, all right, but always remember it. Spiritually. I, I have Jersey Joe from, from New Jersey on one side of you, and I'm going to be on the other side of you. We're not going to drop you. You're not going to drown. And I had to, and they were crying. They said, but I just don't think I can do it. There are some people afraid of water. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I had with well, two of them out of that group were, were like that. Yeah. And as soon as they went down, I mean, it was kicking and <laughs> thrashing. They, they came up kicking, pawing, because they thought, I'm dead. <laughs> I remember they the, were dead. No, no. I remember the face of that girl when you y'all pushed her under. She come up just. <gasps> yeah, I know. She she Terror. was literally scared. Yeah, yeah. So I had but an how, artist. How crazy is that? Yeah. Some artist, uh, Phyllis's man, Tony. Yeah, Tony. He he drew he he watched. He painted a picture. He, he watched. A picture? He watched me baptize some woman down there. That we we got on the bank, you know, and. And, and her coming, just coming up with the water coming off. Well, he drew a picture on that. Yeah. But it is a awesome picture. Yeah, it is. But uh, the girl, I think that, that he knows the girl. I mean, he did it for her, you know. But uh, that was pretty cool. Here's what Jan knew. Romans 10, 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You have to have a hope that somebody has that, right? Yep. How then can they call if somebody on the one them. they have not believed in? Yep. And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? Right. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Mm. And how can they preach there it is. unless yep. they are sent? And As it is written, how beautiful the feet are the feet of those that yep. come yep. proclaiming the gospel. That bring good news. That's right. And, and so that's what she knew, and that's what we do. And after it's all over... And those girls, you know, said, well, I'm not going to die today. I'm not going to drown. <laughs> you did. She did die, that. though. You did. <laughs> I began to say, now your sins are gone. You you went down kicking. I'll give you that. But <laughs> now you have eternal life. And you know what they did? They, they went on their way rejoicing. They, they cried. Yeah. 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 They cried. They, well, I told Dad, I said, now, Dad, you understand, you have to be a little more specific <laughs> when you tell people that, we're gonna. You, that old person's gonna die. Well, you yeah. need to let them know we, we are gonna they bring heard you. die, and they say this is it, <laughs> and they're afraid of water. They... <laughs> well, no, no, because I, I told him the best thing he ever told his younger brother. Because I come in on leave, and all his running buddies showed up. Okay, and I was there to witness it. They all asked him, "Come on, man, let's go. Yeah, y'all, let's go run the women and get drunk again." Yeah. Yep. He said, "Hey." Y'all don't understand. That old boy died. He's buried in good riddance. Okay. So people, that's why I, they don't realize, to, you know, there's some things that you don't mess with. Baptism is one of them. Yeah. Don't mess with that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's you're reenacting the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. That's right, Sam. Yeah. And look. It's that, it's that important. You have it's eternal life riding on this, and I think that's why the scene in in the movie is so powerful, because you get this culmination of everything you've been watching up until this oh, no. time, and oh, he's yeah. out there in that pond, yeah. and it's like, you know, and, and you, you're witnessing and seeing well, that. Told me it was the movie that brought them when they when they saw that. No, no, yeah. and they say, hmm. well, when when you you hit rock bottom and turned to Bill Smith and yep. said, hey. I have no idea what I need to do. Right. And Bill Smith looked at you and said, hey, Phil Robertson's got to die. Mm. You got to put that old sinful man to death. But you know, the people... Well, a lot all of, I say, say is it worked. Yeah. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of people hey, have told Bruce me... Bruce in the pudding, boys. A lot of people have said to me the same effect that, that it had on me the first time I saw the film was, you know, when you fade to black and it's like you've seen the story and then there, there's that two or three beat pause and then you hear dad's voice in the now mm. and then all of a sudden he comes on screen as he is now and then now continues into this is what i've been doing to your point earlier in the oh, podcast no. yeah but that there was something very 
like tingly about that moment Ooh. that you get to hear that voice I out of the darkness. You tell me that. Do what? Yeah. yeah. They said that's when I. Oh, I had a guy tell me he's like, I mean, I got my chill bumps got chilled. Oh no, when no. I, when I heard his voice, like. Because the voice was speaking then out of the wilderness, which is what we just read in Romans, you know. Oh, no. Well, let me. I want to say one thing, Sai, before I, I know you want to say something. But the Robertsons are look, y'all are to be commended. Phil, thank you for your boldness. And Al and Sai, y'all don't know this about Sai, but when we go to events and and he's preaching to people, he is so bold. Oh yeah. I mean. Uh, and look, he just tells them to repent and turn to Jesus. It doesn't matter who they are, where they came from. But, Sai, you do an excellent job doing that. And, Phil, when your son was sharing the gospel with me and he said, he said, Philip, he said, you're going to have to die to sin. He told me the same thing. And I was like, he wants to push me under the water. There's going to be a fist fight today. You're not pushing me under the water. Of the water he too. said, okay. no, I'm not scared of the water. I just, I don't want anybody pushing me under the water. And I said, I said, I humbled myself, and I said, I'm getting away from all these other things, all the other securities in my life. I'm willing to give them all up because I want to see Christ in my life, and my life changed forever, and all my family's life changed, and I know I say it like a broken record, but I am thankful for the Robertsons. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for Hebrews 11, 6, that says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God because those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he him. rewards those who him. earnestly yep. seek him. So thank you to the Robertsons for being bold and for a size uh, and I appreciate that. sister. Uh, yeah. Brother? Yeah. What were you going to say, Seth? Well, I, I would just, when you watch the movie and they finally get to the point that they that Bill baptizes him, it's one of them things you just find you go, oh, now I can breathe. Oh, yeah. Now I'm really alive. Yeah. Okay, because that's I, I'm telling you, without Jesus, you are dead in your sins. You are. I don't know how many it's been, but quite a few just showed me pictures, and people were outside, and the water was flying in every direction. Right. <laughs> but I, but I think that's ultimately the point of the rich young ruler story, is when you're asked to give up everything to follow Jesus. That's everything. And so whether your life has been a mess, as we described from dad's situation in the movie, or your life has been a success, you still have to give you up everything back. to you follow can, you Jesus. Can come back. I mean, that's the point of and the whole still, story. still, if you're not, if you don't have Jesus, there's a void in your life. Right. That's why Cy was telling me on the way down here, when he got back from the military, he said, Philip, I had to repent. He said, I had to repent, and I did, and turn my life back over to Jesus because some things he had seen in the in the, yeah. in the the war. Yeah, yeah right. Hey, I went to the dark side. Right. Well, that's why I'd always tell you, I said, you're not by yourself, okay? Because everybody, you know, uh, I've, I've stated it this way. You choose your own poison, and by that I mean you choose. Whatever sin drags you away, you chose it. That's right. That's right. You chose it, okay? That's it. Hey, you got a choice here, okay? Are you going to stay there, or are you going to come to the one that will give you eternal life, will wipe your clay clean, clean? That's right. As pure snow. That's right. You know, his blood will cleanse you, you know, and then he's promised you. You got, you got, God Almighty has promised you that, hey, you're clean, okay, and he don't see you. He sees his son because there's only one perfect human being. He was a Jew, and his name is Jesus Christ. He was born of the Virgin Mary, no sex involved, okay? He's the son of the Most High, God the Father. And guess what he did for you? When he went to heaven, he sent the Comforter. That's the Holy Spirit, Hey, I got God's DNA in me. Yep. I think them atheists going to have a tough time with old side <laughs> well, they are, No, they done had a tough time with me. I had them, I had them on strike in, in New York City. That's true. You know, and I just said, there ain't no such thing. Well, Sal, you wouldn't hurt anything if you want to get put to get to your dentist to throw you two or three. Well, I ain't worried about no teeth. <laughs> the teeth are leaving, dude. I, ain't, I know it. I'm getting old, so hey, everything, that, everything's that, falling out. I noticed that when I, we used to run together, at least you had all your teeth. Yeah. 
<laughs> Who cares about teeth at the resurrection? Hey, I don't care about teeth. All that means is somebody just needs to chew his food. For That's it, hey. Uh, so we're out of time. But <laughs> I went uh, by I, You did. Yeah, I uh, want y'all to join us in our overtime because you brought up the idea of impossible uh, from Hebrews 11, 6, and that's a big theme in here that we didn't get to. So I want to get to that in our overtime. Uh, that's blazetv.com slash unashamed. Uh, to follow us over to overtime. Si, Philip, it's always great to have you on the show. Thank you, fellas. for being here. And I knew this was going to be good, and it was. It is good. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube, and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.